With 67 million subscribers and counting, Netflix has become an integral part of many people's lives, filling the role that cable networks had occupied since their inception. For the longest time, shows have been released an episode at a time, normally once a week. But Netflix has changed the way that people interact with their entertainment and what they expect from it. In this video essay, I'm going to be exploring these changes and seeing if our enjoyment of shows has changed due to the ability to binge watch. Netflix started dropping entire seasons of shows back in 2013, and since then, thousands of consumers aim to complete the latest released shows from the moment they drop. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Three, two, one. The widely successful second season of Stranger Things being a prime example of this, as it was watched in its entirety by over 361,000 people on the first day of its release. We can thank Ted Sandros, Chief Content Officer at Netflix, for introducing this trend. There's no reason to release it weekly. I got a call of every network executive I knew who said, don't be crazy, you've got this huge investment, drag it out, make them come back every week, and you could launch new things off them. It just sounded to me like the same kind of managed dissatisfaction that is the entire entertainment business. So Randall's also recognised that releasing all episodes of a shot once could become an event with a large captive audience that isn't going to be forgetting about the show between episodes released weekly. It also leaves people wanting to join in on the trend of watching the latest big show, with internet forums becoming dedicated to content release discussions and episode by episode dissections to cover any secret meanings. This international collaboration leads to a sense of comradeship in those viewers seeking out online examinations of episodes, allowing the viewer base to rally together whilst working through the show. This is in keeping with Katz and Blumler's use of the gratification theory, which details the reasons why people consume media. In this instance, it allows viewers to develop real-world relationships based on a piece of media, so being up to date with the episodes is essential. However, another view of this could be that many fans of said shows would end up feeling obligated to binge the latest seasons in order to stay up to date in the online communities and spare themselves from any potential spoilers. Try to keep up here. Escapism is another theory to why people consume media, as the shows or films they consume allow them to be mentally transported to another, simpler world. Unless, of course, you're watching shows like Bojack Horseman and find yourself addicted to this bleak and depressing world this animated horse lives in. I mean, am, 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 am I just doomed to be the person that I am? The, the person in that book? It's, it's not too late for me, is it? It's, it's not too late. Diane, I need you to tell me that it's not too late. But either way, everyday life takes a back seat watching Eleven develop her powers and Joe Exotic mess up at every turn. Oh my god. I am never going to financially recover from this. This view is presented by cultural anthropologist Grant McCracken who said that binge watching is a new kind of escapism that is welcome today. This view seems to be more accurate than ever with the current coronavirus pandemic. Many nations across the globe are all in the middle of lockdown, with people confined to their own homes and left without anything to occupy them. The world has suddenly become a daunting reality for all, with people no longer being able to watch the news without being consistently reminded of the threats to their own and loved ones' lives. As a result of this, people are using shows, films, games and books to escape their boredom by experiencing events via the people on screen or between pages. Welcome to the start. Oh, you're a new life. Welcome to the start of your new life. You will never be the same again. However, due to the immense increase of people watching Netflix throughout the day, no longer with a reason to stop their daily binge, Netflix has ended up having to cut their regular streaming quality due to the significant increase of demand for viewers during the pandemic. Whereas, on the other hand, many shows which are available on TV, releasing just one episode a week, results in the audience having a curated sense of community as they followed the weekly story throughout the year with all other viewers. Along with this, these week breaks help create suspense and anticipation for every episode as the audience look forward and long for more of their much-loved content, instead of all episodes feeling like they've merged into one, leaving the audience unsure on what specifically happened in each episode. This issue has been proven through studies which reveal that in a test to see how many participants out of 100 could correctly recognise a part of a specific show, 76 of binge watchers were able to correctly recognise the show after one day. However, after 140 days, only 61% were still able to do so. In comparison, 
74% of weekly viewers were able to correctly recognise the show, and after 140 days, 71% were still able to. These results suggest that although those who binge said media may slightly recognise parts of the show better than those who watch it weekly, in the long run, they end up greatly forgetting more of the show. This issue can link back to the idea of the episodes all feeling mashed into one, which in doing so makes it harder for those who binge the show to correctly identify specific times of events in said show. In conclusion, there's no argument that Netflix has changed the way that people can view media, with audiences no longer being made to conform to the hegemonic ways of consuming shows, but instead now have the freedom to watch what they want, when they want, for however long they want. Although this freedom may result in a slight lack of total enjoyment of these said shows, consumers will not have the responsibility to decide and find out what suits them best.